Hello. Reboots are symptomatic of a fundamental lack of originality in Hollywood. Have you no shame? That's a great question because uh, Gabe and I will often talk about how, uh, you know, early on, one of the ways we approached the show philosophically was, you know, what what would the show look like in 2020 had it never gone off the air in 98, right? It would have had to sort of adapt and change to the political and cultural and you know all the changes that have happened in those years what would it look like now and yeah pretty much it's a it would be uh, a continuation imagine it like there was no gap you know let this be a lesson to all wherever there is stupidity we will be there we with a lot of reverence um like you said i i think you know, you could look at the the first, the original show as its own awesome self-contained uh, universe that's amazing. And, and you know, we're just trying to build off of that incredible foundation. Um, so, you know, when you're, you were kind of given the gift of um, rebooting a property that uh, managed to create lightning in a bottle, which is like, you know, in, in television is so hard to do. And they did it. And our first duty was like, we got to keep that lightning in the bottle. We we'll try our best, right? Vigilantly. Um, so when we first started, like one of our first sort of stated goals was to make sure we produce a show that was worthy of the first one, or tried to. Um, so we tried to like imbue every frame and you know with a reverence for the original, whether it's like curating the, the tone, the balance of you know cartoon violence and meta humor and social commentary, satire, parody, musical comedy, all that wonderful stuff uh, or just uh, you know in Gabe's side of things like recreating the look of the original um, and Gabe you know can talk about this more but he took a real deep dive to make sure you know that it looked as much like the original as possible while also you know updating it yeah we definitely went through like the original show and and uh, looked at like all this all the studios they used and and looked you know, it was a very wide range, and and we really honed in on uh, TMS, which was Tokyo Movie Channel, was a Japanese studio at the time, and uh, and we really leaned into like that that aesthetic, and really I talked directly to people that worked on the show back in the in the in the 90s and asked that, like their approach and what their process was, and and we tried to do that, you know, tried to stick to that. Maybe something reminiscent of the first season. <laughs> 22 years later and I'm still a knockout. Well, I mean, like all, like when they made the original show, they went out of their way to make it very cartoony. They made it uh, like the, the cinematography was there. Like you could tell that Steven had his fingerprints all over it from the beginning. And uh, so we leaned in, we definitely I wanted to do that. And like TMS, they're amazing. Like, like, even before I saw Animaniacs, I watched Tiny Toons when I was a kid, and I could tell which ones were TMS and which ones weren't. Like, just the animation snappier, they the characters feel more alive. It's just more pushed. It's just that's that's. If we got any of that in this new show, that was like what I was striving for. You know, visually, like, um, you know, the variety aspect of it too is like that. It like I I felt like. Like both when Well and I were talking, it was like that's the one thing that's the, that's the cool thing. It's like it's a variety show, but visually it's very similar. So that's one thing we could totally bring to it that would help really like expand it out. You know, it, it was yeah. We tried as the best that we could to you know make it feel fresh and familiar at, at the same time. Turn on the black light. Nothing unusual there. When I was started working on the show and going back through all the episodes, I watched them with my two sons. And when we came to the great Wackeretti, <laughs> we I think we watched it like 25 times in a row because they were dying. They were laughing so hard. And like, so if you're going to ask me what my favorite segment is uh, from the original, I think it's a tough pick, but like, I think it'd have to be that because I'm influenced by my kids' laughter so much. And that's, you know, they're they're probably 70% of the audience anyway, right? So, um, yeah, I mean, just so funny, so funny. <laughs> the thing is, you know, I, I'd hate to do, do a, a worse version of it, you know? I've tried online dating, but I keep getting catfished. How do I know she's even real? Well, I think just like, you know, uh, 
you know, just like in the last, uh, you know, 22 years, um, you know, so much has changed and we, we, uh, in the same way that we updated uh, the uh, references and the music genres and, uh, you know, the, the, you know, articulating the, the cultural impact uh, that's, you know, that's changed so much in, if you think about it, I mean, since 98, I mean, look at Hello Nurse. I mean, you, you, you can't do Hello Nurse now, you know, it'd be totally and completely offensive and nor could you do, you know, the, the old, you know, howling wolf in the zoot suit, you know, wh whistling at women on the street and stuff. Um, so, you know, we took a very careful inventory um, of what we were given and tried to, you know, keep the most, the, the, the most, the most core characters, uh, the Warners and, and the Warner sister and uh, Pinky and the Brain, um, and then build out from that with, with characters that were maybe a little bit more uh, relevant. And also, you know, my, my personal strength is, you know, uh, rapid fire sort of joke machine kind of comedy. And, uh, you know, there, there are definitely places that are soft and, uh, you know, wonderful musical numbers that are gentle and, and uh, you know, tug at the heartstrings and stuff. Um, but there, there's also uh, a sort of rat-a-tat-tat pace to the jokes that didn't quite uh, fit with the with those other segments. Um, so I think it was just sort of part of the the update or the uh, the reboot because it is, it has been so long. Um, you know, certain you know, like a parody of Goodfellas now would seem <laughs> so dated. Um, so you know, we'll make our new uh, parody of whatever the most you know beloved or you know critically acclaimed movie is uh 22 years later you know but ultimately it was just it was just part of uh you know the of just making the show uh, as relevant as possible and you know yeah and, and, and there's absolutely there's nothing wrong with those segments it's just you know at all and we did think about bringing them back for sure um, but it, we, we, we just we came at some, every angle possible. We have some references to some of those characters as well. Oh. Like, yeah, it's not like we completely ignore them. So. Yeah, no, there there's surprises that we don't. Well, I shouldn't say anything. But yeah, awesome. Don't, don't say anything. Quantum mechanics, quinoa wraps, Queen Bay. We've missed so much. Boy, you know, uh, it would probably you probably need a third party to sort of examine how you know the various things have influenced me in different jobs over the years uh and the skills uh or tendencies that i've developed um but you know the, i think the main difference is just that you know family guy uh we could we could get away with a lot more because you know the show is really directed at adults yeah kids want to watch it just like they wanted to watch the simpsons um and you know but it's it is specifically directed at adults like if they if kids happen to get a reference and think it's funny that's great but they're really not supposed to be watching it <laughs> like i haven't shown my boys are eight and eleven and they've never seen family guy or ted or anything you know because they're just not ready yet they won't get it but the um and then in animaniacs is you know we had to a adjust our sights a little bit um because the you know the original audience was i think 75 percent kids and 25 percent adults and, you know, I think that's sort of our sweet spot or the sweet spot that we aimed for. Um, and, you know, with, you know, Hulu and Warner Brothers, uh, you know, uh, keeping a close watch on, you know, knowing that who our, you know, most likely key demo is, you know, not to make jokes like the, you know, not go as far as we do on Family Guy, you know. But Wellesley's approach too was also a little different just production wise because like, uh, every a lot of shows I've worked on personally, like the writers and artists are very separate. And like Wells and I talked really early on, like let's get everyone together, let's not have that weird division, that weird animosity between the artists and writers. So I think that also is different than your experience on Family Guy too, right? I mean, it was like, 
two di totally different like even on the original Animaniacs, it was they were on two different floors. Like they didn't even like talk to each other. So yeah, the first the first thing I, I was said to Gabe, I was like, we have these we have two camps uh, of very talented people. Yeah, so we were like, why wouldn't we, you know, bring these two groups together as much as possible and let them feed and you know bounce off ideas off of each other. And so we really did that, and we, you know, a lot of amazing stuff came out of it. You know, we the artists would come in with a, just a character design with nothing more than, you know, maybe a name for it and, and the drawing. And then the writers would riff on it and suddenly we have a new character or a new segment, you know? And the director's like, oh, we can do this and we can do that. And just, you know, working collaboratively like that uh, just seemed, you know, like so simple and logical and just made so much sense, you know? Use use all of your, your weapons, <laughs> you know? all the tools in your toolbox. That, that nostalgia factor is so powerful. It's so powerful, it really is. And you hear that voice, you know, that you've heard and, and you know, was so impactful to you at that tender age, you know, it's, it just comes all flooding back and it, it's emotional, absolutely. I'm hoping that people will be, you know, feel that way when they watch the, the reboot. Totally insane.